about this when we actually get to that step. So there are three main steps in cell respiration. The first one is glycolysis, which happens in the cytoplasm. The second step is called the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. Krebs, after the guy that discovered it, citric acid, because that's the first thing made in it. It happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, which I will show you in a moment. And then the electron transport chain is our last step, and it's going to occur in what are called the cristae, or these inner membrane folds of the mitochondria. So this is a mitochondria. It's not the best labeling job, so I'm going to sort of relabel it. So the matrix where, this is where the um, Krebs cycle happens, is here, the very, very center. So that's our matrix. Um, all of this inside the middle. There are two membranes here, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. So the cristae is this inner membrane. In this picture, they label them as two different things because kind of, in, in reality, the cristae is supposed to refer to the specifically to the folds, which increase the surface area. But really, if you think of everything I'm tracing in blue, all of this would be cristae. So here, here, this entire inner membrane. So they labeled this as inner membrane, but just ignore that. And then the inner membrane space, that's the space between the outer and inner membrane. So that's this. All of this is the inner membrane space. So this is where the hydrogens are getting pumped. So those are our three parts. Again, if you were going to draw this from scratch, so your mitochondria has two membranes. This is your outer membrane. This is the inner membrane, which we're calling the cristae. The matrix would be this middle part in here. That's going to be your matrix. And then the intermembrane space would be here, all the space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And you should know where each of these uh, steps is going to occur. But today, right now, we're just going to talk about glycolysis. So glycolysis just means to split sugar. Literally, glyco for sugar, lysis to break. It's a really complicated process. Look at all of these steps, which are actually cut off at the bottom. And each one of these steps in this metabolic pathway requires an enzyme all of these enzymes. But you don't have to know any of that. All you really have to know is that what happens in glycolysis is very, very simple. After all these steps are done, all you really did was you took one glucose, which is six carbons, and you split it into two molecules of what are called pyruvate. And pyruvate is three carbons. So glucose basically just got cracked in half. You also lose a couple of hydrogens from it. Those hydrogens end up on this colon enzyme NADH. Now, glycolysis makes a total of four ATP. However, it costs two ATP to get it started. So your net gain is only two because two of them were used to start the process. So you're only ahead by two ATP. And that's it. That's the whole step of glycolysis. Here it is again. So you start with one glucose. The glucose basically gets broken into two pyruvates, so three carbons, three carbons. You make four ATP, but your net gain is only two, and you make two of this coenzyme NADH. Now that's significant because NADH, this coenzyme, needs to get recycled. So in other words, it was NAD plus, sort of like you take carrying groceries to your car. When you get to your car, you gotta get rid of the groceries so that you can then go back and pick up more. So NAD plus picked up hydrogen from glucose and became NADH. But eventually, you're going to run out of NAD+, so you need to recycle it. So if there's no oxygen, what's going to happen is called fermentation. You're not going to make any more ATP, but you are, and this is the whole purpose of fermentation, going to recycle the NADH back to NAD+, again. And what's going to be made from that pyruvate, it'll become either ethanol in bacteria and yeast, which is alcohol, and it'll also make carbon dioxide, which is what makes bread rise, and in us, it makes lactic acid. So when your muscles are burning because you've been working out, it's because you're not getting enough oxygen to your muscles and your body is switching over and doing fermentation. Why? So it can recycle NADH and keep doing glycolysis so you can keep making ATP. So here's a summary. Glucose got split into pyruvate. If there's no oxygen, fermentation happens, the purpose being to turn NADH back into NAD+. If there is oxygen, it's going to go to the mitochondria for all the other steps. And here's just a picture to show you the difference. So alcohol fermentation in yeast, this is how they make alcohol. This is also, again, how we make fresh bread because it makes carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide bubbles as the yeast is eating the bread dough. Those bubbles uh, make the bread rise. And then this alcohol dehydrogenase 
makes ethanol. In us, instead, we have a different enzyme, so we make lactate or lactic acid. But again, only when there's no oxygen present. If oxygen is present, then we're going to go a different pathway. We're going to go aerobic respiration. Oxygen is going to be what picks up those hydrogens from the NADH, and you're going to end up with water as your final product. You're still only going to harvest about 40% of the energy from glucose. That's what's going to get captured in your ATP. Um, and the rest of it is, is really going to be lost as heat. So that's glycolysis, and that's our introduction to cell respiration. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the other two steps, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, and what they do.